future uh, weather files using the Climate Change World Weather File Generator from University of Southampton. This is a free and very easy to use um, future weather file uh, generator. Um, I'm not going to go into all the details of how it works and why it works. I'm just going to show you real quickly how to use it. So um, you can see on this uh, web page that I've attached to the assignment the uh, URL. And uh, if you go down to midway down the page, download the Gen, Gen 1.8 and associated manuals. First, you want to download the tool that will download a zip file. Um, you may, depending on your browser, see a security risk. Um, it's been OK for me, and uh, I've allowed the download. And once that downloads, it'll take a, a little while, depending on your speed. Um, you'll need to extract it and double click on the file, run the executable, and then follow the instructions. Um, secondly, you need to um, download the World Weather, Man World Weather Gen Manual because uh, this gives detailed instructions on what to do once you download. But I noticed that this link is not working. Uh, it, gives, it returns you to this uh, no results found page. However, it looks like this one up here is working. So again, you may need to allow the download depending on your browser settings. Once you've done that, um, open up that manual. And if you um, go to the, um, is this the third page? Uh, page three of the PDF, page two uh, as labeled, uh, you'll see the requirements for usage, including having uh, Excel, Microsoft Excel, and then a uh, present day EPW file, and then the uh, summary data for the model predictions, which it will go into more detail in a second about. Uh, so download the EXE file, which you've already done, and make sure to install it. Um, then get an EPW file. Uh, we'll talk about more about where you can find EPW files in class, uh, but this is one uh, good location right there. Um, and then next, and this is probably the hardest, most time consuming part, is to open your browser, go to this page, and then download the files that are listed below, these files here. And I'll show you that because this is a little time consuming. Oh, well, that's interesting. It looks like they may have moved the files. Uh, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this URL and do a search for them along with CC World Weather Gen and see if there's another place I can find them. This looks like it. Yeah. So it looks like they changed the URL here. So I'll post this in the assignment that this is the actual URL to use. Um, and here you have uh, some different uh, files that you'll need to download as part of the instructions here. So to do this, uh, you, you have to download each individual one. There's a total of 76. Uh, and you'll see here, for example, A2A experiment column one. This is column one here. So I need to download the precipitation file from 1980, which would be this one here. So I click on that. And then I need to check there to say that I confirmed and read the terms and conditions and then download it here. Unfortunately, each time you do this, you do need to go through all of these steps. And uh, so the next one is wind, download. The next one is from column two, DSWF diff, which is this one here, and so on and so forth until you get to all 76 files. Uh, once you've got those, you um, need to decompress them. You can decompress them using a uh, utility like uh, WinZip, Use it, uh, deals with tar.gz files. 
and um, and then you're going to copy them over to a local file a folder, which I'll show you in a second. Um, one thing to note here is that they also require you to rename three of the files. So this is TMP uh, 2020, TMP 2050, and TMP 2080 need to get renamed to TEMP 2020, 2050, and 2080. Now all this is extremely cumbersome, so um, what I, I wanted to show you this so that uh, you'd be able to do it in the future if you needed to. Um, but I have uh, downloaded all 76 of the files, including rename them, and I've posted them to a folder on our class website so you can access them there. Once you've downloaded them, go to your hard drive and in, on your C drive, you should see uh, CC World Weather Gen. This is your installation directory. And within this, you'll see the HADCM3 data folder and you'll need to take those files uh, that uh, are up in the class folder and um, copy them into this folder um, and you should be good to go. Now we get to the fun part where we actually make the file. Uh, go back out one directory here and under CC World Weather Gen, you'll see this Excel file, ccworldweathergen.xls and open that up and you'll see a screen like this. And um, this is a lot more self-explanatory than the other parts so far. But actually, before we go into that, I want to go back to the manual because there are a few settings here you need to make sure that you have in Excel. Um, so uh, make sure that your decimal and digit grouping symbols are correct. In other words, uh, you have to make sure that you have um, periods set instead of commas. And uh, if you, uh, you can go into the settings to change that. And then you also need to permit macros and uh, make sure to set the auto recover to more than 20 minutes. So uh, and both of these are fairly important steps. Make sure you go through that um, on your own version of Excel. Uh, so then the next part is getting started with actually morphing the data. And to do that, we're going to um, make sure that this uh, URL or not URL file path is set to where we just included uh, that those uh, morphing data sets. And then we're going to select the EPW file that we want to morph. The uh, file I'm going to show you here is um, I'm going to do San Francisco one. that which I downloaded from uh, the web just a, the uh, TMY3 EPW and it's going to confirm for me where this is right here the, the current EPW file is here it's reading the header information for that file uh, number two is to select the had cm 3 a 2 scenario ensemble time frame so we can either do 2020s 2050s or 2080s for this class, we're going to use 2050, and then we're going to load the scenario. Once you click this, it's going to take a few minutes to load the scenario. So I'll let it do this, and I'll come back in a second. OK, we're back. That took about two or three minutes to complete. Depending on your computer speed, it may take more or less time than that. And um, it's confirmed here the closest had CM3 uh, grid points to our location and, um, and sort of where it is uh, doing the, the model morphing. The next stage, uh, number three, is to actually start the morphing process. And this takes a little bit more time. Uh, so uh, you might want to take a break when you do this, but I'm going to click Start Morphing Procedure and you'll see it also running through these uh, parameters as it goes. I'm going to hit pause while it populates and I'll come back in a few minutes. 
as you do this, you might see, uh, you might get this pop-up um, showing you that there's a problem with the global horizontal radiation. This has to do with the way that the EPW files, um, it, well, it typically has to do with the way that EPW files um, uh, use time uh, relative to the sun's position. Um, and I'm going to click on fix inconsistency here and it is going to create a log file and I do recommend that you uh, click yes on this to generate the log file so you can review it later to see which hours of the year were changed and to see if that's going to have a big impact on your simulations. So I'm going to save that in the same place. and then let it keep going on its way. I'm going to pause again while it keeps populating. All right, so that process took about five minutes or so, and now uh, the last step is to generate a EPW file. And um, you can see there's a button right there. You click on that. It'll run through the output, ask if you want to save it. I say yes, and then it'll give you a file path to save it to and you're done well actually there's one more step um, so go back to excel where you had the cc world weather gen open go to file open and navigate to your um the, the files that you just made i'm going to navigate to mine and you'll see it's, it'll be blank um, you need to set this to all files and then you'll see them. And uh, the first thing I'd like you to do is to open the original EPW file that you downloaded. Um, this is not the morphed file, this is the original one. So I'm going to press open here and it's going to give me a little import wizard. I want to make sure this is on delimited, press next, and then clear these. And I just want this to be a comma delimited delimited like that and then press next and finish and then you'll see this imports the original EPW file which has 8,768 rows in it um, that's 8,760 rows for each hour of the year plus these eight lines of headers right here the next step is to open uh, using the same technique, open the file that you just made. So in my case, I'm going to open this HADCM3 A2 2050 file, open there, and do the same thing. So delimited and just comma delimited and press finish. And now I'm going to look at these two files side by side. You'll see, I hope, that the original file goes to column AI, whereas the file you just made only goes to column AF. And while this is not really a problem uh, for most applications, this is a problem for, this will be a pro problem for our workflow later in the semester. So what I'd like you to do is to take columns AG, AH, and AI and press Control C and then go over to here and press control V. Um, and then I'm actually not sure about this, but I'll just delete those um, few lines that were up there. Um, these data points are not important for the simulation other than um, they're necessary for the simulation to run, uh, but it's not data that it'll actually be using in the run. It just is required to be there. Okay, so then the last step is to save your file. So save this as, and um, you want to make sure, sorry, this is not set to tab delimited, but to comma separated um, MS-DOS there. Actually, I'm not sure if that matters. Let's just go with that. Um, and I'm going to save this as 2050 uh, amended and save. And I'm going to 
navigate to the folder where I just made that, so here, and it will automatically add this CSV suffix. I want to delete that CSV. So I just wanted to end with EPW like that, and you can change it. Oh, and it's not doing it because it's open. I need to close this and then do that. Okay, and now you should be good to go. So this will be the EPW file that you use in the future. Um, so good luck with that, and hopefully all goes well, and I'll see you in class.